You probably already know my name is Gabe, and I'm a 12th grader who goes to Providence and is part of the 12th grade boys, wherever you're at. Shout out. Out. See ya. So, my sermon is about, well, we already had an entire weekend about it, but I really want to press forward to it because it's so important in the world we live in today. It's God's truth and identity for us. Society has said that the most important thing in your life is that you need to live your truth. That your self needs to detain from all social responsibilities, all God's calling, and you will be liberated. You will be free. However, the world doesn't want to do that. It seeks to define us and keep us into our own identities and labels rather than what God has a calling for us. It turns out we aren't just a number of cells walking around doing whatever we want. We actually have a purpose and a plan. Yeah. Truth means more than knowledge. It is understanding that opting into God's purpose is not confinement, but is actually the understanding that God has a path more important than whatever you are subjectively feeling a certain day or a given week. We almost realize that what opting in is not actually suppressive, and that it seems throughout our mainstream media and what we see throughout our entire day is that the word, the word of God is completely destroyed. We never see it, it gets taken off, and we don't ever understand what God's purpose is for us. We see a more narcissistic nature about your authentic self as the most important thing in your life, rather than being God's child. So if you open your Bible, we'll go to 2 Corinthians 11, 13-15. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it's no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond with their deeds. When I was a kid, I was very curious, as many of you were. I would go around trying to find each and every answer to every single problem, because that's what kids do. We want the answer given to us and hope for a better result. So when going into middle school, what is the one thing we all want to do? We want to fit in. We want to go and find a group of people to tell us that we're the best and that we are going to fit in just right. The problem with me is that I tried so hard to consume me to the point where it never gave me actual happiness. It was never purposeful. It never gave me the light of day to say, I love myself and I know someone who loves me. There was an irresistible climb to perfection that none of us could ever achieve because there was always somebody there who would say, you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're not cool. You're not funny. You're not anything. There's always going to be that one person. It wasn't until I went on a ninth grade retreat where it was very similar to this. We get to worship. We get to find a, a retreat, a getaway. And I was worshiping and something came over me. And it was like the Holy Spirit talking to me and saying, well, don't care about what these guys are looking at you for. They don't have anything on you because I love you. I love you more than anything. And no one needs to tell you who you are but me. <laughs> so then I felt this massive weight lifted off of me. I raised my hands for the first time and I started crying and I couldn't believe it. I was a child of God. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is once we find Christ, we are born again. Not literally, because I don't think anybody wants to do that. But we are, our old flesh, our human sin has been destroyed. And our new born again identity with Christ is renewed. Which means we aren't defined by the people we hang out with, with our culture, with our gender, with our race, with anything that you believe in anything. You're, I, and I love what Rachel said earlier. I mean, she, your reputation does not define you guys. It doesn't. <laughs> there are plenty of people in here who have done amazing things and they're all different because we're all grounded in Christ's love and sacrifice. So, what does that mean for us? What does it take for us to make that next step and understand God's truth? Many of you are new here. And the, I can tell you this, the best thing to do is to actually look at his word. Yeah. What he actually tells us 
is exactly how we find our true identity in His truth. And a lot of you, you know His truth. You look at His word. You say, I know this stuff. I get it. I, I've been doing this my whole life. But you're not applying it. You can't just know something and not apply it. It's like, it's like me knowing the order of a menu and I don't actually order it. That doesn't make any sense. You look at the word and apply it. Go around and pray and understand you can apply it to yourself. And those of you who actually do apply it for yourselves, what's the next step? Do not be content with that. Because as Christians, we're supposed to spread the good news. Be the beacon of light for the world that is so dark and corroded around us. <laughs> so, it doesn't take a guy like me to stand up on a giant stage and preach to all of you to tell you how special and gifted you are and what you can do for this world. Because God knows we need it now more than ever. Each and every day, we must fight for the right side of truth. For it is God's plan. Because in His truth, we are satisfied. In Him, we are found. And in Him, we are saved. Thank you. Yeah!